Well, Mr. Millennial, it's raining absolutely cats and dogs out there. Mother Nature, I don't want to give up. Mr. I guess that means we got a date with old Bubba Dump again. All right, last video, guys, we made a lot of good progress. Got everything on the back end pretty much locked up. Got a lot of knickknacks locked up. The other evening, I had a little bit of spare time, and I was going to try to put this locker back together that goes in the drop box. And noticed we have a cracked housing. I don't know if you guys can see down in there. We got just a small little fracture of a crack right there. I wish Aaron was here to weld it up, but he's not, so we're going to have to do the best we can without Mr. Mr. Uh, man, behind the man Behind the Scenes. So we got so some... you're uh, doing this? What? What's our other option? Well, I thought you'd maybe bring a second professional in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I only know one professional. I don't have a second. So we got some uh, Infidel rods, which are basically nickel. I think what we're gonna do is do a little test run right here. See how it welds. And then if we're comfortable with it, we'll weld it out right there. But uh, we need to preheat this thing first. I do know that much. So let's get the welder set up. Hopefully we can get that welded. We're gonna let it cool slowly. Well, that's cooling off, we're gonna I don't know, tie into something. We still got a list. All right, I actually ran a little test spot right here on this pad. I don't know how well it shows up, but I got to ground this right where you can see we got good penetration right there. And I uh, don't seem to have a whole lot of porosity. It seemed to bond. It seemed to do like it seemed to do, seemed like it did everything it was supposed to do if I could talk. So got the crack ground out here. What we're going to do is take the torch, preheat this up, come through there, weld it out, and see what we got. Well, Mr. Millennial, for a couple of uh, amateurs, I don't think that looks too bad at all. I'm not even anywhere near an amateur. Those co a couple of little imperfections you see right there are not actually pits. So I took the slag, ha slag hammer and kind of pinged it. By pinging it, you kind of expand that weld a little bit and kind of make sure it don't um, crack as it cools down. So we're probably gonna let this sit for a little bit. We may even come over here <clears throat> in a half an hour or so. Throw a little bit of heat on that. Even slow down the uh, process even more. But the big thing is, is after it's completely cool, we need to inspect to make sure it don't crack right along our well. That's what we don't want to happen. So, excuse me. Well, that's cooling down. I think the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jack everything up. I'm gonna go ahead and yank this wheel seal out. Uh, while I'm working on this wheel seal, I've got a few things that Mac can pit along on the back. So let's get this baby jacked up. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but we definitely, uh, we definitely got a leaker, and this side's not leaking as bad as what that side is. But one side at a time, we're going up. I'm gonna go up, Matt's gonna start busting off some lug nuts. I'm gonna guess the front of this truck's a little heavier than the back. Tire coming off. By the time we get to the fifth one, we'll probably be pretty good at this. I don't think so. Let's just, let's try not to take that one off over there because then we don't have to say we took every tire off this trap. All 
All right, this one here's got quite a bit of different brake set up. Matt's gonna get that blowed off while he's doing that. We need to get the oil drained out of this thing. Oh yeah. Hey, that one's actually got some good looking oil in it. That look like chocolate milk. <laughs> yeah. Watch your eyeballs. All right. All right, Matt got the dust shield off the top. We got the brake lines unhooked. We got all bolts out but one. This one here, uh, well, let's just say it's a little bit uh, jammed up there. But this on the front axle, it's got two sets of calipers on it instead of one. And these brake pads are all but, all but shot. Toast. So we're gonna try to uh, get those out of there. Good news, I did order all new brake pads. So this thing, this thing ought to be. Oh. <laughs> Smash party, smash finger. Ah, oh, great day. Um, this thing I'll be able to stop on a dime after we get her done. I think so. All right, let's see if we can get those uh, calipers out of there without smashing any more fingers. Mm -hmm. I think. I'm not, I'll always think I should have been. Oh, gosh, <laughs> dang. No. Coming? Yeah. Definitely got, All right. got a gap in her. You ready? I guess. Ready as I'll ever be. Here she comes. Okay. I'll help you, but I don't know how. Oh, you did much better on that one there, buddy. <sighs> Matt's gonna work on getting these calipers cleaned up. You guys can see those brake pads. They're uh, they're not shot, but they're wore pretty good. We got them apart. We're gonna go ahead and do that. But these seem to be in pretty good shape none of them seem to be leaking but we got to push that piston back up in there before we push that piston back up in there we just want to clean everything up real good make sure we don't push any push any dirt back up in there so matt's going to work on that now that we got that done we can get this uh we can get this hub pulled off there and get in there to that wheel seal On this one we're gonna follow the book leave the axle take the gear off i'm just hoping my tool i made to tighten that nut will uh, reach down in there so we'll set him over here next thing we need to do is get that big snap ring off which will allow that washer to come off which will allow the nut to come off which will allow the hump to come off all right i had to modify my tool a little bit there to get the depth around that axle this axle will not come out because it's got the locker assembly on it. That actually will come out because the locker assembly is actually on the other side. But this one here, I was kind of surprised. I thought for sure this uh, nut was going to be loose, which may be part of the reason why our seal's leaking, but it seemed to be still be pretty tight. So we'll get her ran out of here and get our jack underneath there. Definitely pull her off. Jack this up just a little bit. Take some of the pressure off of it. It should come off there. That seal is toast, man. Fish are coming. Yep. 
You got to hit it? Well, I'm trying to do it all tight quarters here. Uh, come up over here and hit it. I think it'll come out a little easier. Oh, yeah, she's coming. Bring it home. Got it. <laughs> so not only is the seal toast, but this is that spacer ring that goes up in there. You guys can see it's got some pretty serious grooves wore in it. So we're going to get everything cleaned up. Get the spacer ring replaced, get the O-ring replaced, get the seal replaced. I think we'll be in good shape. Nice. So, you know the most important part about installing a wheel seal? Nope. Making sure you put the bearing in first. It's in there. Oh, you got it. Second most important part is make sure you don't damage the wheel seal. Alright, let me get a block of wood. <laughs> the O-ring's in there. That all looks clean. Push that up there. I want you to a little snug. You want a hammer instead of your hand? Well, I don't want to hit it too hard because that O-ring will pop out of there. Oh. You gotta watch. Part of me thinks we'd be better, better off putting this in the hub and then using the nut to slide it all on, but I can't really keep an eye on that O ring. I just seem to do it this way, keep an eye on that O ring. The o -ring. Getting close now. Looks like it's still in there. I can't need a light. Better light. Yeah, we're still good on this side too. Working inside a disco ball today. Flashing lights everywhere. Seal is on, or not seal, spacer is on, cleaned up pretty good. You gonna tell them about this cool stuff I got here? This is like the coolest stuff ever. Is that all you got, Bob? No, look, look, look. <laughs> well, let's just show It them. is aerosol grease. So this is from a Texas Refiner Company. Jerry Davis sets us up with this stuff, but it's the same grease we use, but it's in the aerosol version. Look at that. And I think it's gonna work just perfect for these seals to make sure we don't cut one as we put it on. Not a seal. That's a seal. Well, look at that. Ain't that slick? You know the best part? I didn't get any on my finger. None. All right, let's leave Florence so we can slide his head back on. Straighten up a little bit. All right, you're gonna have to go up. Just the shade. Go towards the garage door a little bit. Okay, come on in slowly. Looks like we're just a shade too high. Oh, that was more in the shade. Ready? Yep. There we go. There we go. Well, I got a glove, baby. No, we just need to drive that back in there. Okay. All right, nuts next. You want to grab that torque wrench? <coughs> it's kind of hard to start while you're here holding this big old ginormous tool and trying to film it. Oh, come on. All right, first torque to set everything. Oh, watch out. Oh, you come off. There you go. It's like 350. What are you set at? There we go. All right, now we gotta turn it five times, back it off, and retorque it. How far you wanna back it off? Half turn, it says. Okay. Wow, 
like it. All right, got our nut in there and torch. Next thing we need to do is put our lock nut, our lock washer in. So one tab fits in the axle and one tab fits in the nut. Got to figure out where it's gonna go. There's a couple different locations it can go. That's not one of them though. Now we'll give it back. That one maybe? Ooh, that one's close. Where's the next one? That one maybe? Oh, that one's really close. That one maybe? Man, they're all so close, but none of them are fitting. All right, <clears throat> we're gonna have to adjust our nut just a little bit. I need about another quarter of a turn. All right, lock washers in. I'm gonna get the snap ring in. Come on, baby. So close. Gotta go. I think it will if you push this side over here. There you go. I <laughs> got it. Nailed it. All right, drive gear, please. I ain't cleaned it yet. You're gonna oh. hold on. This gear does have to go a certain way. As you guys can see, it's got some oil grooves on the back of it. That'll allow oil to get into this planetary a little bit easier and kind of uh, fling it around. Oh, why can't I not do anything one-handed today? There we go. All right. Snap ring, I gotta pull that axle out just a little bit. DP hadn't forgot two clips and the gear, we would have done all this before silicone was put all the way around us. <laughs> no idea what you're talking about. Matt decided he wouldn't be he man. He's gonna hold it up there so we can work it in. Okay, you got your holes lined up. Hub assembly's back on. That went uh, really well. Actually, Matt is bringing the brakes over. We got a couple of our bolts. Some anti seize on them. Why don't you go to that side there first? Can you get that up there without busting your fingers? Well, which side did I bring? I got a bolt <laughs> in one hand and a camera in the other hand. Which one did I bring? Uh, it'll go on either side. That one here was actually on this side. We have to switch. Oh, well, that camera's gonna be in the wrong spot. Oh, no, it's not. How ain't it? I gotta it goes, go around here. That one goes down. Goes on the side. You said you wanted it on your side. No. No. You, oh, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. That one goes over here. Told ya. Switch, switch. <laughs> Hi I don't know where you're going to. I'm going to slide it around to you. <laughs> All right. Got it? I think so. Something's not in. There it goes. There it goes. Up and there you go. That's all. Ah, fuck. A little awkward, ain't it? But you may have to adjust that top over here. It's in. Sweet. Caliper one on. No smash fingers. 
You gonna be able to get caliper two? We're getting ready to find out. Go down, go down. Too high. Come on, buddy. There it started. She should hang. Cool. All right, Matt's tied another one down. We're gonna pull these blocks off the top. Try to get those pads in there. Think they'll slide in? You say they will, so I have to believe it, I guess. It all depends on how far you got those pistons pushed back. All right, here goes number one. Oh, I got one went right in place. Nice. Number two. Why don't they paint them red? Green means go. Guess I didn't think that far ahead. <laughs> Pretty slick system they got here though. Yeah. Other than not giving enough room for the bolts. That can't have everything. Put that line back on. I'm gonna shoot a little bit of air down in there, which should help seat those brake pads. Oh yeah, did you hear them click? That'll make uh, should make bleeding out a little bit easier. All right. All right, brakes all hooked back up. Dust cover back on. Last thing we got is this little bitty teeny weeny tire. The man behind the scenes is there, he just pick that up and put it on there. Yeah. All right, that tire went back on. We are definitely getting faster with every one we do. We got this little system, it's wham bam, thank you man, we're on there. Say, so, hey, it stopped training, didn't it? <laughs> stopped training, we got one more wheel still to do. We got one more left, it's this one over here. The other front, I think you guys kinda got the, uh, you guys kinda got the whole system down pat. We're gonna let you time lapse. <laughs>
Boy, oh boy, am I glad to have that done and have that tire back on. I think that uh, completes all the wheel seals, all the service brake, all that work, a lot of the heavy lift and a lot of the big projects. Whew! That was fun. In real time, I don't know how long it was in time lapse, but in real time, it took us two hours and 10 minutes from start to finish from the time we jacked the truck up to the time we let it back down. Considerably faster than what it took me on the first one. We still got to get oil back in the axle, but I'm going to do all that at once because uh, I still got to pick up the oil. So checking in on what we did this morning as far as welding this up. I've been keeping an eye on it and actually I should have filmed it. I actually took the torch and kind of heated it back up one time right before lunch. Let it cool down slowly. After it cooled down the second time, I went ahead and painted it. That little hole you see right there is actually from where I pinged it with a slag hammer, but I'm very, very happy with it, guys. I don't see any signs of it cracking, pulling. It looks good. Uh, everything on the inside looks pretty good, so I think we're gonna go with it. I think our next project is we're gonna try to get this locker assembly back together so we can get that on the truck. I don't know if I explained this real well in the beginning, but the cause of failure here was this bearing. This bearing is completely toast. And uh, I thought somebody maybe Mickey Mouse this together, but that's actually factory. But what they did Mickey Mouse together, somebody's been in here before. I lost it in my pile of parts over there, but they actually made a homemade pin. Uh, see where this thing's missing? Missing a pin there. So I don't know if they were just trying to patch it up to move it down the road or if they just didn't know any better or what. But... Uh, I think the first thing we need to do is try to get the new bearing and the new uh, yoke, is that what you want to call it? And then that bearing goes onto the locker and then uh, we'll try to get that whole assembly down in there. So anyways, got all the parts cleaned up. Let's see what we can do. Before we go through the trouble of heating that up, I'm gonna see if this bearing will go down in there. I don't think it matters which way it goes. So got a little brass hammer and a Oh, I think she's gonna go. Look at that. A little tappy tappy. Nice. Now, I believe this snap ring goes there to hold that in. Let's see if I can find the snap ring pliers now. Well, that was almost too easy. All right, now we gotta get that yoke through there. All right. Check that out. We got a very nice, tight, rotating assembly now. That is mucho better. So 
Next thing we gotta do is see if we can get this pin in there, I guess. Hopefully that hole's not too wallered and mangled. I think we'll just try to drive it through on this side and drive it straight down. Let's see what happens. That's not good. Not the best situation here, guys. This is supposed to be a press fit, and as you can see, it's got some unwanted movement there. I think the best resolution to that at this time is I'm just gonna put a little bit of tack weld back here on the back, and um, I should hold it in place for now. So, not ideal, but we'll make it work. May have got a little carried away with my tack there, but uh, I don't want that little pin coming loose inside that drop box because it could probably cause a little bit of damage. All right, I think it's time to try to get it all back in the housing. All right, follow along with me for a second. So this thing here hooks in here like this, and this is what hinges and pulls it back and forth. Behind that, we got this great big spring it goes and sets right in here. Actually, it goes this way because there's a little washer on the end of it. So it goes like that. This whole thing goes down in that hole. And then this pin right here goes to the side of the housing down here and lets everything pivot. So what I'm thinking is our best bet is going to be to put this in there all at once. But no guarantees on that. So let's find out. There it is guys, that wasn't bad at all. Everything's down in there connected. There is a full adjustment procedure on that and I'll kind of cover that a little bit later. We have to do that after it's in the truck because we kind of got to adjust how far it travels in and out of there. But that's going to be a wrap for tonight. I am tired. I am wore out. Hopefully tomorrow we'll get back out here and uh, get this thing wrapped up. Right. Next morning, we're going to try to get this thing out of here. Matt's actually replacing one of the uh, brake fluid reservoirs. It's got a little bit of a hole in it up there. So we'll get that done before we bleed in. I'm going to crawl down underneath the truck and we're going to try to get that locker installed. Let's see if I can get this on here without parts flying out or getting dirt in it. Anything I can do to help. spring. I need a bolt. Right here. I just want to make sure this thing goes in square. Yeah. I got your other two bolts whenever you're ready for them. Let me tell you, I'm glad to be out underneath there for a little bit. <laughs> that is not the most comfortable place to work, Mr. Millennial. I didn't feel a thing. We did uh, air test the locker. Everything seems to be working beautifully. I believe I got the front brakes bled. So next thing, I think this is our last big item. 
let's get this parking brake assembly installed. So basically the way this thing works, you guys can see we got our new pads in here. We gotta be a little bit careful as this whole assembly slides in here. This is a big mechanical spring. So air compresses the spring, compresses the spring, releases the brakes. The mechanical spring is what actually applies the brake. That way if you have complete failure of the air system, the engine, the air compressor, whatever, you still got some sort of mechanical brake. And that whole assembly fits down over top of that new rotor. There is some shimming and some adjustment needed. But uh, first things first, we gotta get it in there. You ready? I'm ready. If I go to lower that down in there, the left more level you can hold it more better. I know it's probably hard for you guys to see down there, but we are not <coughs> deep enough basically, which means we need to take a couple shims out each side. So let us get that shimmed. We'll get her tightened down and we'll get the actual brake adjusted. You gotta tell everybody about your party foul. Party foul? You spilled my Pepsi. Well, that's not a party foul. You put your Pepsi in my way. All right. I can't do final adjustment on that until we get air on the truck. Matt's tightening down the last few bolts. I think it's time to uh, put some oil in these rear ends. What do you think? It sure is. Sounds like a ball of fun. Hey, guess what? I went shopping at the jungle store and I bought me something. And I'm hoping it saves me a whole lot of hand pumping. Got me a little 12 volt Mickey Mouse oil transfer pump. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you got to back up for a second. What's that? You went shopping where? Went shopping at the jungle store. The jungle store? Yeah. Talking about Amazon. Amazonia, yeah. It isn't the Amazon, it is Amazon. Oh, well, same difference. <laughs> no, 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 it's not that a rainforest. Would, that would explain why I didn't see no lions, tigers, or bears on my while I was there. Oh, and it's a rainforest, not a jungle. <laughs> I'm just helping you people with the comments, all right? <laughs> all right. Let's hope this thing sucks 90 weight or we're going to be in for a long afternoon. <laughs> All right, this right here is going to determine how our whole afternoon is going to go. We've got the jump pack, oil transfer pump, gear oil. I sure hope this works. Come on, baby. Oh. You know what? Okay, I'll be right back. Oh, that don't sound good. You gonna make it, little guy? What do you think there, bud? It kind of works if you hold it just right. I heard that before. Don't move. You just moved. Look at it pumping out of there. What are you talking about? It's the old hand pump. I don't want to jinx it. Oh, boy. What'd you do? Oh, my goodness. If I set it on top of the bucket, it won't pump. I'll hold it right here, well. Fix the trade, man. Gotta have like a downward loop in the suction. Huh. Oh god. They would invest in a hose clamp on that. Yeah, you want one of those? Yeah. Why don't you put the camera down and find something to hold the hose clamp? Coming right up. 
You guys are gonna find this hard to believe, but my jungle pump caught fire. <laughs> <laughs> it did manage to get five gallons in before it went down. Five gallons, five gallons. We're gonna funnel as much of it as we can and we'll have to hand pump a little bit of it. Is it going? Oh yeah, she's going down. All right, we got over 20 gallons of 90 weight in there. Woo. That was not fun at all. And I'm thinking I'm wearing at least a gallon. That's got the truck fired up so we can build air. So you guys can see, it's got the uh, spring sucked in right there. <coughs> so we basically need to adjust this slack adjuster out until those brakes are tight on that rotor. That may be a little too tight. We'll back that off just a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see, but if you look right down that hole, you can see that gap. All right, go ahead and set the parking right now. Look at that. It worked awesome. All right, guys, it's actually a nice day for a change. Let's get this thing out of the shop, see if all of our hard work actually works. Bring her on there, Mr. Bunnell. Well, this was not the plan, guys. This is not, this is not how we're supposed to end this video. The truck's got brakes, parking in service. All the lockers are working. <clears throat> but for some reason, now the truck will not go. I don't know what's, I don't know what's going on. The uh, transmission will not engage. We've not had any issues with the transmission up to this point whatsoever. And uh, yeah, I guess it likes being in the shop where it's nice and warm and cozy. I don't know, because it, uh, it won't move. I've checked, uh, I feel like it's something simple. I feel like it's a safety switch or a wire we bumped or something along those lines. I've tinkered with a few things with no luck whatsoever, and uh, I'm kind of out of time. This thing's got to get out of the shop one way or the other, even if we got to drag it because we got some other stuff that needs to come in. So hopefully, hopefully I got this thing moving by the time you guys see this video. But for some reason, if I don't, if you guys got any hints or indications of what it could be, comment down below and let me know because this thing is... Uh, this thing's starting to wear on my patience a little bit. It's uh, it's time to stop spending money on it, start making a little money with it. And we got uh, we got other projects we need to work on. So anyways, guys, that's gonna be a wrap on this one. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, give it a big old thumbs up. If you wanna see if we can get this beast moving again, I guess subscribe so you can uh, catch us on the next one. <laughs> what a roller coaster the last few days have been, let me tell you, but uh, we're moving. Long story short, you got to put the fuses back in the right spot and uh, everything works the way it's supposed to. So, let's see if we got brakes. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, we got some good brakes finally. Look at that. I mean, we might as well go test the lockers out now, right? We're going down the hill. I feel a little, a little confident now we got some brakes. Oh, that feels so much better. So much better. So you guys probably noticed the hood's still not on it. I forgot to mention the first half of this video. We actually got most of the bodywork beat out on it, and I've got it sandblasted, but I haven't had time to do the actual true bodywork and uh, get it back on the truck. But hopefully we'll get that uh, get that done soon. But I think once we get the hood back on it, hopefully as long as this test drive checks out, everything mechanical should be in pretty good shape. Man, it is nice having brakes. Good brakes at that. All right, guys, I'm starting to get a little bit excited. All the brakes seem to be working awesome. None of the wheel seals seem to be leaking. Everything seems to be working like it's supposed to. We need to do a test on these lockers. I'm thinking this right through here should be a pretty good test. I think it's going to take pretty much everything full lock to uh, 
climb through there and it still may not climb through here full lock but at least be able to make sure everything is spinning so uh i'll set you guys over here and let you watch let's see what happens crawls around like the monster truck it's supposed to be ah oh, that's a relief that is cool i don't know if you guys can tell we're still climbing the mountain in front of my house got her locked in she's just trucking right along parking brake works brakes work nothing's leaking i like she's ready to go to work Like we dodged a bullet on that one i knew it had to be something simple just couldn't quite find it but we uh we finally did and she is in uh she's slowly slowly getting back into tip top shape still got a few things i'd like to do to it obviously getting the hood back on is priority you guys keep screaming at me to paint it i'm not against it i may paint it one day but i want to make sure everything mechanically is in good shape before i ever paint it and uh, it seems like the unanimous decision on the exhaust is to uh, build my custom stack so we may uh we may tackle that at some point because that exhaust there is definitely not up to uh their perfect standards and boy oh boy am i glad this girl is out of the shop and am i glad everything is working the way it's supposed to so for the second time guys we're going to end this video hope you enjoyed if you did give it a big old thumbs up if you want to make sure you don't want to miss out what's coming up next consider subscribing it's free that way we can catch you guys on the next one later